Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, new session of the Permit COE webinar series. Today, Jesus uh, Gorroño Aitia is going to talk about uh, Coupier, a user centric meta orchestrator for cross platform workflow delivery and execution. Uh, my name is Daniel Tomas Lopez. I am involved in Permit COE on behalf of Embel DBI, and I'm going to host this webinar. Before starting, I would like to make you aware that this webinar is being recorded including uh, the questions and answers section, and that the recording will be disseminated afterwards. So please, during the webinar, feel free to ask uh, questions using the Q&A button in your Zoom panel. Please note that uh, all materials are licensed um, using a CC BY 4.0 license. So Permit COE is the HPC Exascale Center of Excellence for personalized medicine in Europe. Permit COE focuses on simulation of cellular mechanistic models, which are essential to translate omics data into medical actions. The performance of cell simulation software is still not enough nowadays to address problems such as tumor evolution or finding personalized treatments for patients. So Permit COE is going to scale up the software for cell simulations to the present HPC exascale systems in order to enable the creation of models of cellular function of medical relevance. Permit COE will achieve, achieve this goal through a series of objectives. First, it will optimize uh, selected cell level simulation software to run in pre exascale platforms. Second, Permit COE is developing a series of uh, use cases that will showcase applications of Permit COE products in different fields of clinical interest, such as drug synergies for cancer treatments or performing multi-scale modeling of COVID-19 virus and patient's tissue. Additionally, Permit COE also has as objectives training the biomedical professionals in the use of HPC tools, um, integrating the Permit communities, and building the basis for the sustainability of the Permit COE. Today's presentation is going to be about Groupier, a meta orchestrator, an orchestrator for cross platform uh, workflows. So, let me now introduce our speaker. Jesus has been working in diverse uh, ICT companies as software analyst and architect for 20 years. In Atos uh, Research and Innovation, he is chief architect and senior research on the AI data and HLS unit, member of the Advanced Parallel Computing Group, where he designs and develops cross-platform meta orchestrators for HPC infrastructures in projects such as uh, Eustat, Hidalgo, or Permit COE. And he's also Atos technical team leader of AI-centric project uh, IoT Engine. So Jesus, uh, now the floor is yours. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Tomas. Let me share the desktop. So hopefully now you see the desktop. Uh, yes. Okay. So while my, <clears throat> my name is uh, Jesus Corroña representing ATOS, uh, working in the context of the project Pirmicoe, um, where we are uh, further developing Coupier. Coupier is a user-centric meta orchestrator. That is intended to the distribution of uh, workflow-based applications, delivery, and execution in high-performance computer infrastructures. Um, although I will try to introduce Groupier in the context of Permit Coi, Groupier can be used for any kind of workflow-based application that can that needs to be executed across different and uh, multiple HPC infrastructures, not only for applications uh, for uh, personalized uh, biomedicines but for any other kind of application that requires high computer, uh, computation um, resources. Uh, the presentation will, will be mostly <clears throat> practical. I mean, I will be using the, the Coupier framework, which is here, uh, but also I will be using all the components of Coupier, like monitoring based on Grafana that uh, I, uh, is uh, presented here. As well as uh, I will use the access to some of the high performance computing infrastructure that we are using in order to run those applications. So I will be moving from one desktop to another, but I will be explaining what I'm, I'm doing. I will use some slides in order to introduce what is this tool about, and what is the role of this tool in this kind of uh, project like Pyramid Coy. 
Uh, but the purpose is of the slides is just to introduce concepts. Uh, most of the content of the webinar will be conducted through the through the tool. So first, so well, this is the outline. I will uh, introduce what is the motivation scope of, of the target audience for this tool. What is the concept of meta orchestration compared to other workflow managers and high performance computing schedulers? And then I will talk about about these workflows. I mean, because the applications that we are supporting are, are those that are based on workflows and what is the workflow life cycle. And then I will go briefly through the Cupid ecosystem because it's a complex tool consisting of uh, different services. And then I will focus on the front end, high level specification. And then while I'm running the demo, uh, I will use as well some slides in order to describe how these workflows are specified by using Tosca, that is a language for cloud application specifications. So uh, first, I, I want to introduce the scope. Um, Croupier is being used in the context of Permaco and other projects in order to execute, I mean, to deliver execute across multiple space infrastructures, uh, um, workflow-based applications. So this providing support for application consumers, so a provider, sorry, and application consumers. For the procurement, delivery, execution, and monitoring of, in this case, permanent biomedical applications, but it can be also used in other domains. Uh, the motivation is the following. I mean, uh, in our experience with high performance computing, we have been facing a number of um, issues that we are not claiming that are everywhere that are the only issues that will be happen, but we consider that are um, situations that are making difficult the adoption of. Uh, high performance computing to a wider audience. Uh, in particular, for application uh, providers, they need to know um, programming techniques for parallelism and all those libraries that are required to um, build parallel based uh, applications. But also, they have to, 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 to manage uh, workflows like, uh, I mean, workflow managers like those that are being used in uh, Permacoil, like icons, which is being developed by the Department of Computer Computer Center. And also, they need to, uh, uh, to manage uh, application scheduling by using schedulers that are used by high performance computing infrastructure sites such as Learn or PBS and Torque and others. And the access typically to high performance computing infrastructure is through HSH for the management of the entire life, uh, application life cycle, for application delivery, for the management data, execution, and monitoring. So these are aspects that are making the um, delivery and the consumption of um, workflow-based application and high-performance computing infrastructure uh, a bit difficult. So that implies that uh, we need to rely on high specialized roles, including roles for application provider and consumer, but that typically adopted by high performance computer engineers or scientists, or within a reduced team that are supporting those roles. Of course, uh, there is no way or easy way to execute uh, an application across multiple high performance computing infrastructures. And there is not a single access point, cloud access point, to support the entire life cycle um, for both application providers and application consumers. So that's uh, the one of some of the reasons that in previous projects we started building this tool, Cupria, uh, for two main roles. I mean, the audience are on the one hand we have a high performance computer engineers, or scientists, which are adopting the role of application providers. So we are supporting them in an easy application delivery um, of their applications. For instance, in the marketplace, that could be the marketplace of applications for uh, personalized biomedicine. And also application consumers and users for the easy application procurement, execution across multiple high performance um, uh, infrastructures and monitoring. So uh, in this slide, I want to introduce the concept of meta orchestration. I mean, what is the role of Coupier and how Coupier is uh, interacting with other workflow managers like icons or schedulers like learn, learn in high performance computing infrastructures. Coupier manages application workflows and data workflows together. Um, Coupier deliver or dispatch task of the workflow to those workflow managers and schedulers 
which are actually taking care of executing those um, tasks within the target infrastructure. So Groupier is not actually executing the task, is relying uh, in work for managers in the target infrastructure or schedulers to run the task. It's a kind of task distributor. Uh, in terms of workflow, uh, life cycle, uh, I'm going to distinguish between uh, workflow for application owner and workflows for application consumer. Uh, for application owner, Groupier is providing support for its application delivery within the marketplace. So the application owner can provide a description of the application. I will talk about this description, this called Blueprint, in a declarative language by using Tosca. And it will be deployed together with additional application descriptor describing, for instance, how to deploy the application in target infrastructures in the Groupier marketplace. So we may have here and we'll see a marketplace for permit coin. And then those applications will be ready there for being used by end consumers. So what concerns application consumers, they can first procure applications from the marketplace. So they can select one of those applications and they can in install the, the, those selected applications in the um, applications portal, let's say. Next step is to instantiate with one application. Instantiation of an application implies to provide some inputs for that application and to select the target infrastructure where the application is going to be uh, installed and later executed. So the combination of the application blueprint with the inputs and the selection of the target infrastructure uh, will create an instance. And that instance then can be executed. The execution will be, uh, will be done across the different high performance computing infrastructure that has been selected by the user or by the application itself. Therefore, Groupier will take care of distributing the tasks across these infrastructures. And the next text is to provide application monitoring. So the execution of the application within the uh, high performance computing infrastructure will be monitored and um, the collecting metrics will be displayed on the dashboard. We will see this in the demo. So briefly describing the Groupier ecosystem, Groupier core consists of um, orchestrator that is based on Cloudify. Cloudify is one of the relevant uh, cloud-based orchestrators in the market. And Groupier is a plugin that provides specialization to run tasks and workflows in high performance computing infrastructures. Um, as group, a Cloudify frontend is not intended to be used by end user without specialization. Uh, we have developed with a frontend, which is interfaced with Groupier by a backend component. So this is the Groupier core. And then we have a number of additional services that we are using for user authentication authorization. Uh, AEN is supported by Keyclock, which is managing the asynchronous sign-on endpoint to um, manage users and authentication. And then we have Vault to uh, store the secrets, I mean, the credentials of users to get access to the target infrastructures. On the other hand, we have monitoring subsystem, uh, which is collecting data, describing the, I mean, the execution of the different tasks within the target infrastructures as well as collecting information about the uh, infrastructure partitions or uh, queues. Uh, this is a component, which is Prometheus, is one of the state-of-the-art components, open source component for monitoring, which use uh, an exporter that we have all of it for uh, collecting that data from high performance computing infrastructures. Then we have used Grafana in order to query the monitoring database in Prometheus to provide um, dashboards for uh, end users. So in the demo, we'll be using the Groupier frontend. The Groupier frontend provides support for application providers and consumers in order to manage applications in the marketplace. So the application providers can um, deliver, can dispatch uh, their application and consumers can take them when needed. Then for consumers, we are also supporting the instantiation of the application by providing a concrete um, input. The input can also provide a selection of the target infrastructure the, the user wants to use to execute the application and to monitor the application. 
So now I will move to the demo and the remaining slides. So I will just then to describe how applications are described in the context of Croupier. So Croupier uh, is a what is a, a cloud-based uh, solution. Uh, so you offer some front end, and in order to to use Croupier first, I need to log into the system. For that, we're using Keycloak, where I can select my user, and then it will go back to the uh, front end. Uh, where I'm, I'm uh, locked. Uh, so then I can get access to the Groupier. In Groupier, we have a dashboard. In the dashboard, we have a number of instances, which are concrete instances of a particular application, and also executions of those instances. Uh, I can have a list here. At the moment, I have only one instance that I created this morning uh, of an application that is executing um, simulation of COVID-19 um, uh, pilot. I can also go to the left side panel to see the list of applications which are available in the user uh, application list, which has been taken from the uh, marketplace. Um, here I have three different uh, Pyramid Koi applications for three different pilots that we are supporting. And I can also have the list of executions, all my list of executions that I have executed in the last, uh, in the last, in the last executions. So I will go uh, through um, the different roles. The first role is to be an application provider. An application provider wants to deploy a new application into the uh, Groupier marketplace. In order to do that, the application has to, the user, I mean, the application uh, provider has to uh, select one concrete uh, descriptor. Here, in this case, I'm going to deploy another instance, another version of the COVID 19 pilot, where the input set is much more simpler. Um, it's only requesting to the user a few information compared to the previous one, and then I will use this one and the previous one in order to compare the differences. Oh. And it's completely up to the application developer uh, to design the application and to decide what the inputs are uh, to, going to be uh, requested from the user. So this fifth file contains the application blueprint that is a Tosca description. I will go from for, mo for more details in the next. Uh, slides uh, and then the user has to provide i mean the, the application owner has to provide a, a name and then a description And then the uh, provider submits the data. This data is sent to the Groupier uh, server. And once it's deployed, it will be made available into the list of, uh, I mean, the marketplace list. At this moment, uh, we have a dedicated marketplace that we have not connected yet uh, that supports um, to purchase, um, I mean, to acquire uh, applications that are posted by application owners. In this particular case, every application that is posted by any owner is available for all the users. But by using the, the marketplace that we already have available, uh, only those that you are purchasing will be available in your dashboard. OK, now I am adopting the role of application uh, consumer. And I have here in my dashboard a list of applications that I get access to. They can select one, and I can decide it um to create an instance in order to create an instance i have to provide inputs so there are three different base uh, ways to do this the basic configuration will just request a name and it will use the default uh, in, uh value input values and as per one we'll get the list of inputs and it's up to the user to determine i mean select inputs i mean provide inputs for this application and a name 
But there is another option that we'll use that is that they can choose one concrete uh, YAML file containing all my inputs. If I go to the expert configuration, this input has been already uh, filling. In this case, I am requesting, I mean, the, the application uh, owner or uh, provider uh, a design this application with an input set that requires the input meta metadata that describe the, uh, the patients that will be used to um, to run the COVID-19 simulation. And also it's requesting the number of repetitions and simulation time. This is information for the application itself, but also we have information about the number of uh, high performance computing nodes that we want to use for the different uh, tasks within this uh, application. This application consists of three tasks that will be executed in, in different high performance computing infrastructures. So the croupier is able to distribute the task across different infrastructures. And how these tasks are distributed, whether in sequence or in parallel, will be determined by the application design. It's up to the application provider to design how the application can be executed. In this particular case, is uh, in a sequence. First, the, the first task will be executed in Marinostrum 4, which is a high performance computing infrastructure uh, in Barcelona Supercomputer Center. The second task will be executed in MATI, it's a um, high HPC in CSC in Finland. And the third task will be executed back in uh, Marinostrum. The data produced, I mean, the outputs produced by one task will be transferred before the, the next task is being executed by Groupier as part of the workflow that is attached to the, um, sorry, as part of the data flow that is attached to the workflow. Okay, so um, so then I will provide a name. Um, for this instance, and a description. So I already loaded the file with the inputs and then I will save it. So now the instance uh, has been sent to the Groupier platform. And then a uh, portal uh, shows the data, I mean, the details about this instance, the inputs that have been uh, used in order to secure the instance and what is the name of the instance. And also I can uh, have a look to the logs. These logs. My God. I got a failure. I have been testing this many times in the last <laughs> two weeks and I get a failure. Okay. I will try to fix this. Yeah, this is the console for Cloudify when I will see all the. Uh, uh, tools that I have, and also here I have the services. So this one is getting problems because I cannot get the credentials from the poll secret loader. This is managed by Groupier. I wonder why. I will undeploy this one and try again. Maybe I select a wrong input file. I will double check. And then I'm going to uninstall it. So I can create the instant again. And so I have to delete it. Okay, so if I come back here and I go to the dashboard, okay. So I'm going back again.
So I will try to deploy it again. Okay, now things are going well. Okay, you move it. So uh, here they have the logs. There are different kinds of logs. We have events. Events are produced by the uh, workflow manager for, for Groupier, describing kind of milestones in the in the installation of the of the workflow. During the installation, um the application will be distributed across the different high performance uh, target high performance uh, computing. So if code needs to be transferred from Groupier to uh, the, the, the application code needs to be transferred from Groupier to the uh, uh, target high performance computing infrastructures, it's during the installation process where uh, this will, will, will be done. In order to do this, first it has to retrieve the credentials from the, I mean, the user credentials for the different target infrastructure. This is done by collecting the credentials from all. This uh, is shown here. Uh, once everything is done, uh, the application is installed and then it's ready to be secured. Uh, here I can filter by the types of events. I can just dis uh, display the events. I can just display the logs. I can also uh, select what is the log level I want to display. I don't have at this moment only debugs. This information could be useful in order to um, explain to the application provider what is going on when the user is facing with some issue. Um, so here I have also other filters that I can apply. And then I can refresh the, the, the logs every time I, I need. So once the uh, application has been installed, I can go back to the details and I can try to execute it. So I send it for execution. Then one execution has been started and is available. And I can also say, uh, have a look on the execution uh, logs. So now I see that Groupier has sent the first task. And I, if uh, I've, uh, he has got the uh, job ID in the target infrastructure, this first task is sent to uh, Groupier, uh, sorry, to Marie Nostrum. And uh, at this moment is in pending state. If I go to uh, Marie Nostrum, which is here, and I uh, issue the uh, scheduler uh, tool, I will see that one uh, task has been uh, dispatched to the scheduler and now it's in a running state. Uh, so that will be uh, obtained by Groupier. Now Groupier has detected that the application is in running state. So the user don't have to get access to the high performance infrastructure. Uh, indeed, maybe he has no idea how to do it. Uh, all the information can be just displayed here in the uh, logs dashboard. I just show in this, so you can. Oh, sorry, so you can see. So you can see what's going on here. Uh, Groupier has created this uh, folder in the target infrastructure, and this folder contains the code that will be executed. In this case, it's a Python code that will be executed, as well as all the information that is created by the scheduler. The scheduler we are using is PyCons, which is a scheduler, I mean, a workflow manager developed by the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Um, so the user just needs to refresh, and the user will see what is uh, the status of the different task. But there's another way to have a look, which is go to the uh, Grafana dashboard. The current dashboard at the moment is an independent uh, tool, a portal, uh, but the link for, for the user to get access to the portal will be included as well in the Groupier platform. So the access is as well through the uh, through the uh, key clock, but as I already registered in key clock, I'm not prompted now. And I can go to the to the dashboard and I will see here all my executions. And if I select one execution, I will see my um, my task. Here I can select the time, the time range. For instance, I can just select the execution in the last three hours and I will see only the last execution I have just sent. 
or I can select a wider number of days and I will see a higher number of executions. I will just restrict to three days for three hours and I see my, my execution, the execution I have just created. And I see that um, the state of the first task is uh, running. Here I can see uh, some details about the execution, the task execution in the high, uh, the in the target uh, HPC. This is the Marinostron HPC. And I have information about my user there, the submission time, what is the state, uh, what is the number of nodes, CPUs that I've allocated for this uh, job, uh, some information about uh, other parameters. Here I can see the number, total number of nodes at the moment that have been consumed by uh, this um, workflow for this application and some information about the total consumed energy this total consumed energy will be reported only by Marin Nostrum the other high, uh, species is not providing that information uh, so the information will be will depend on whether the target HPC provides or not so if I go back I can refresh the um, the, this task will take a little bit to uh, complete running. So in the meantime, I'm going to explain. Uh, I need to go back to the presentation. And I will explain uh, how the how um, an application workflow is described for group here. Okay. Okay, so uh, workflow in group here consists of, it's, a, it's described as a blueprint. This is common terminology in Tosca, which is a cloud-based uh, notation, standard notation for describing uh, cloud applications. And this has been adopted because it's the way that the main orchestrator that we are using, which is called Cloudify, um, describes its uh, workflows. So it consists on an input, uh, a workflow, data flow, and some outputs. And complementing the input, we have additional information for describing the target uh, species where we are going to send the task, uh, whether we are going to use monitoring, uh, whether we are going to use a secure store in order to get um, the credentials for assessing the different target uh, species. Um, so for inputs, the inputs can be any any input that are required by the application, and this is something to be decided by the application owner. So for instance, in this case, we have COVID-19 applications uh, inputs, and we have three of them in this particular case, but for other application I have, Describing as well the same execution, COVID-19, I have a larger number of um, application inputs, depending on what is the purpose of the application owner. And also I have some arguments for the workflow manager that is being used in the target infrastructure in order to execute every single task, which is PyCons. In this case, for every task, uh, we are selecting the number of nodes within the infrastructure that we are going to use, uh, what is the expected execution time in order to allocate um, in the queue, um, a particular priority to run the, the job. Uh, then we have to, we can uh, select whether we want to use uh, monitoring. In that case, we just need to add this node in the node template section. Not that nothing else, it just has to be included. But when we are uh, describing the high-performance computing infrastructure, we have to um, provide a relationship that connects this infrastructure with the monitoring. And we have to do this for every infrastructure for which we want to monitor the, the job and the queues uh, runtime behavior. The same for secret store. We just need to provide this node for, for hosting uh, um, the, uh, the user secrets and user credentials in, in bold and connect the infrastructure with this um, secrets store with bold to retrieve the user credentials from it. 
the high performance uh, computing infrastructure are described as well. Uh, in this case, we have to determine what is the internal uh, workflow manager or scheduler. In this case, we are using PyCons. And we have to, to, to explain, I mean, to specify what are the models, because every single PyCons installation in different high performance computing infrastructure may have different ways to load it. So here we need to specify the number of models that we need to load in order to uh, use the PyCons uh, workflow manager. This is information that can be provided by the application owner, can be fixed, like in this case, or can be requested to the user. In case that, we leave open to the user to select the target infrastructure. In that case, the user has to provide additional information. In this example, we are not uh, allowing the user to uh, select the infrastructure. We are fixing the infrastructure to be my Nostrum and to be Mati. But in other cases, uh, we can uh, leave it uh, uh, open to be determined by the user. Uh, then here we have to identify the host of my Nostrum, of the target infrastructure. And here we are also determining what is the monitoring period. And we are collecting information about the job execution and uh, every information about the uh, target infrastructure every 60 uh, seconds, every minute. And here we have the relationship that we explained before that are connecting infrastructure with monitoring and the secret stone. We will see what is the situation now of the execution. Now, task one was complete. Let's see. Task one was complete. Then the data transfer uh, took place. Data transfer is using is transferring the results of this task executed in the hyper in the first um, by the first task in the target infrastructure to the second infrastructure to be to be um, adopted as inputs by the second task. Uh, this is determined the workflow specification that we will see in the application blueprint. So then task two was uh, executed as well here in, in, in MATI, but now if I do a SQ, it will not appear because I miss it. But has been executed and information has been collected here in this start in this folder. This is the information that has been produced in the target in the results uh, folder. All this information has been transferred back to the first infrastructure, to Mare Nostrum. And now Mare Nostrum is being executed. If I refresh here, I will see that the first task has been complete. The first task has been uh, sent to Mare Nostrum. The second task has been sent to Mati. Both has been completed. In the, in the meantime, we, we I was explaining how the workflows are specified. All the data transfer between task two and task three has been also connected. And now, now it's, it's now. Now we are transferring the data from the task two. The task two has been complete. And now we are transferring the data to um, my Nostrum before we are signing the task three. That's why here we see task two complete. Here we have to identify the task by job ID, uh, but not we don't have yet the, the information about the, the third task. Uh, now we see that the number of nodes that we have been using has been in, uh, increased by two because we are using uh, more nodes and also the number of CPUs. Here we are uh, describing what is the historic CPU time for this workflow. So we have individual tasks executed here. We can also zoom in. So we see that the this was one of the executions and another one execution. And we see the total CPU time has been increased. We have an issue that we need to fix with uh, timing because as these two uh, HPCs are in different time zones, uh, they are reporting times that are not one after another as the task execution. Uh, so we need to figure out the best way to um, harmonize the time zones of the different high performance computing. This is pending work. And uh, here we have Consume energy. At the moment, we have only consume energy provided by uh, Marin Nostrum. If other infrastructure are providing consume energy, we'll 
collect and report the user the total consumer energy or the workflow and historic consumer energy. So going back here, the user of course can anytime refresh the logs to see what is the, the status or can also go here to see the status. Typically this execution are left until completion. So the user don't have to worry about setting in case that the execution fail and can have a look at the logs to uh, look for errors and to report errors to the application uh, owner or to the group peer administrator. So in order to complete the description of the specification, we have been described high performance computer infrastructures. We can also describe tasks. What we are describing tasks, tasks are application specific. So if we are using Py, uh, PyCons as the workflow manager, every single task will be executed by PyCons. So then we have to provide a name to have to provide what is the <clears throat> source code of this application. Uh, this application is already pre-installed in the target infrastructure in my industry, but Groupier also supports the complete deployment, provide that the application owner provides um, a script. We already have a sample of the script, start taking this application from GitHub and are being installed before application are executed. Uh, but for the sake of uh, running the, the, the demo uh, faster, we, uh, we use a pre-installed pre version of these applications. And then we have a number of um, arguments or parameters for the PyCons. So for instance, in this particular case, we are requesting the user to provide two, the number of nodes and the execution time for this task. The others are prefix. And the same for the application arguments. These are the arguments for um, COVID-19 application. And only the metadata is requested to the user. The other uh, arguments are fixed by the application owner. This is what I'm referring to that the Groupier can deploy the application code if the user, I mean, the application owner provides uh, a script that will be a security back group here to take the code from sources to be installed in the target infrastructure. And here we have relation sheets that are describing outputs in this particular case. And also can describe dependencies between tasks, not here because there were not space. Um, in principle, all tasks in group here are executed in parallel unless there are dependencies among them and they are executed in sequence. Then we have the data worth flow, sorry, data flow. Data flow consists of data objects hosted in data servers that are um, transferred from one data to another by data transfer uh, objects. So first we had to, uh, to describe what are the data, data servers. So for instance, here we have a data server, in this case for my industry, which is using a different front end. We are describing what are the protocols that we are supporting for this data transfer. We are supporting AxSync. And data transfer also requests the use user credentials. So we need to retrieve the credentials from the secret store. Here's an example of data. Data is a particular folder or a particular file. In this case, is the knockout file for COVID-19, which is located at a particular at the same point with the where where, where Groupier is executing uh, the task and located in a particular data data, um, data server. In this case, is uh, located in Marin Nostrum data server. And then we have data transfer. Data transfer are transferring data from one target to one, from one source, sorry, to one target. Here we are transferring the cow file of the task one to the cow file, which is an input in this case, of the task two. In practice, by using our sync, we are transferring the data from the Marin Nostrum high, HPC to match the HPC just after the task one has been complete because the output relationship will force us to do this and before uh, the task two is being executed because of the input relationship. Okay, so this is concluding uh, the, the explanation about how uh, workflows are and data flows are described in Groupier. Let's see if, if 
I get progress on the workflow execution. Not yet, because uh, at this point, we are transferring about one gigabyte of data from the task two, which has been executed in MATI, to uh, Mare Nostrum before task two is, is being executed. So that's why task three has not yet started, because we are not completely data transfer. Uh, it will take a while. If there are questions, I can answer the questions. Uh, I can explain you that the next test will be that once the transfer has been complete, task two, uh, task three will be executed in in, in Marinostrum. Once task three is complete, the total results will be transferred back to uh, Mati. In, uh, typically, one common scenario will be that the results will be transferred to any user um, environment, cloud, server, whatever. Uh, at, this at this point, I mean, for this example, I use both infrastructures, so the data was transferred from one to another. But in, in, in most common cases, uh, the user will select as the final uh, repository where transfer data, some server the user has access to. So the data will be transferred there, and the, the user can get the, the data from from that um, from that server. So we will see here that. There will be another task that will be in a state running or maybe in a state pending, then running, then complete. And once the task three is complete and the data transfer is uh, complete, then the user will be notified that the um, workflow has been executed. The execution will be in a status terminated, hopefully without, with no errors. Uh, so if the user goes to, sorry, to the dashboard, uh, okay, this is, the, the new instance that is not being under execution and it's an instance of this sorry it's an execution of this instance which is an instance of uh, this application uh, okay now task 3 has been sent now it's in pending state if I refresh here maybe I get it not yet because uh, monitoring is collecting data every minute in order to not to overload the target species. Ah, I forgot to explain that also we can offer to the user to show details about the target. So for instance, here I have Mati. Uh, for Mati, uh, we can see the list of uh, partitions. Uh, for every single partition, we can get statistics describing the different partitions. So I can see historic data in the last six hours of uh, jobs which have been running pending in this concrete partition. I can modify the partition. I can also see the total uh, nodes has been allocated, are idle or are in total. Here I have the upper and lower CPU load for these partitions. The allocated and free upper level lower uh, memory. Uh, here I have the queue time, execution time, and left time for per job in partitions, in average. So there is a number of statistics that can be used by the user in order to determine which is the best um, partition to send the the jobs to. In the future, we are planning to um, train some visual intelligent models in order to predict what will be the behavior of these partitions according to these metrics. In the future, in order to ad uh, advise or to suggest to the user the best partition to send a particular application based on the resources that are uh, requested in the <clears throat> resource description. If I go back to the user dashboard. Okay, I see now that the free, free of the task has been complete. This will be also reflected here, and I know that the uh, workflow has been executed successfully. Not yet uh, refreshed here. It will be refreshed. And the user notes that the application has been executed. Uh, and this is concluding the demo.
Uh, so uh, thank you so much for your uh, attention and we'll be glad to answer your question that you have. Thank you very much, uh, Yusuf. Thank you very much for, for the presentation, the slides, and the, also the, the real demo to see uh, how, it, how it looks like, how it works. Um, so yes, please, if you have any questions, please use the uh, Q&A button. Um, and if someone prefers to, to, to speak, we can also um, uh, give you access to, to ask uh, with the microphone by audio. Um, in the meanwhile, I had a question made very, very, very basic from the beginning. Um, when it said that um, Peer does not support a cross-platform uh, application execution, um, is is that something that would be interesting to develop in the future? Is it something that is simply not not feasible? Indeed, Peer supports cross-platform execution. Okay. To do you mean that it's not, not supporting? Uh, that's why I understood from the first slide, but maybe it was, no, no, no. Uh, it's, it's on the contrary. I mean, indeed, I've been executing this this workflow in two different high performance computing the, the, the distribution. I mean, the the workflow was distributed across two infrastructures. Okay. How to distribute the, infra the, the workflow across different infrastructure depends on the application uh, owner, how the application is designed, it can be mm -hmm. designed. Uh, this particular example is pretty simple because it's just consisting of three tasks that are executed in sequence. Normally, you want to take advantage of the full power of high performance computing. You will run uh, multiple applications in parallel. Then, when you collect the results, uh, you will reduce the results, uh, merge them. Um, but in this particular case, uh, we found a simple way to distribute the, the COVID 19 uh, pilot across uh, different infrastructure by Splitting different steps. Um, is, there is not that much advantage of running one after another in, in high performance computing. So I'm not claiming that this particular pilot is interesting that from that point of view. It was just for the sake of uh, demonstrating that computer can distribute the workflow in any arbitrary number of high performance computing infrastructures. Mm -hmm. And depends on the application owner to, this, to design the application to do so, to do it in this way or another. Um, there are two options. One is that the application designer uh, preset the target infrastructure in advance, so they are uh, encoded fixed in the blueprint specification. But another option is that um, which concrete infrastructures to, to use will be determined by the user. And then the user has to provide details. And that's why I, I put some example of details in the slides. Indeed, I have this example, this instance. In this instance, this is another version of the same pilot. But in this pilot, um, the user has to select the concrete infrastructure. So I have infrastructure one and infrastructure two. For infrastructure one, it's Mare Nostro, but has to be selected by the user. I, the user has to select what is the scheduler, or in this case, the workflow manager with these icons. And in this particular case, it has to, to describe what are the models that are required to be allowed before uh, using icons. And this number of models could be different from one infrastructure to another. In Mare Nostro, these are the number of models that are required. In MATI, the number of nodes to uh, set up icons are different. Of course, the cost is different. Uh, in this case, the scheduler, we are using always the sched uh, scheduler for monitoring. Yeah. Uh, in this case, in both cases, Sloan is the scheduler. But imagine that here I have Hawk from HLS, which is another infrastructure that we have access to. It will be a completely different uh, host with a completely different um with scheduler models and with a completely different scheduler in some cases also some pre prescript um, instruction has to be provided so requesting this information from the user could be a little bit um, challenging for the for, for every average user so that's why in some cases it's better if the application owner prefix the target infrastructure and not request the user to provide this information, but you, you can also make it open. Okay, okay, I see. 
Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Um, are there any other questions? Just because I see we are approaching the hour. Uh, if you can stop sharing for a second, I'm just going to put the final slide. Also, in the meanwhile, yeah. give you the chance if anyone wants to ask any question. Okay, can you see the slide? So, so just to say that this is the, the um, upcoming webinar that will take place uh, next month that you can uh, register on the website as always. Um, and also coming up uh, soon, uh, we'll open the applications for the Permit COE Summer School that uh, will take place in uh, June, 2023. Uh, so it will be a one week course and uh, you can now visit the website, you can register interest and we will let you know when applications will open, which will happen soon. So, um, Last chance if anyone wants to ask uh, any questions. Otherwise, uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Josu for, for uh, being here today for your time in presenting uh, this webinar. And thank you to all the participants for uh, attending today. Okay, thank you so much. So thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye.